Good morning, YouTube. We are back in the beautiful buttes of Utah. And as you can see, the sun is quickly setting and we have this beautiful golden light and these nice deep shadows. So what I'm actually doing is ignoring all of this beautiful foreground because <laughs> I already have plenty of images like that. What I really want is just the detail of the butte capturing that beautiful warm light and those nice blue shadows, which will give really nice color contrast. So what I'm doing is I've got the 400 millimeter lens on here and I am focusing just on the detail. Now I'm shooting a multi-row pano. I'm not going to use all of it, but the truth is I need more like 300 millimeters, which is always, always the case. <laughs> when I've got my 400 millimeter on, I need 300 millimeters. So what I'll be doing is I'm gonna shoot the multi-row pano so that I can crop to what I want at the end. Um, I hate shooting multi-row panels with 400 millimeters because the um, angle of movement between each image is uh, minuscule and the odds for error much higher, especially when I'm working quickly like this. But I think this gives me the best option and is gonna give me the highest chance of success of getting all of this detail, basically from the bottom of the butte towards the middle, just getting all of those really nice ridges, just focusing on the texture and the warm light. That's really the whole point of this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the shot, stop jibber jabbering because I've got about three minutes before that sun drops behind the peak. <laughs> and as you can see, we're already starting to lose that light. So I'm gonna go ahead and capture this image. Whew, <laughs> I just made it because that light is dropping quick. I ended up doing uh, three rows, about six images each, so about 18 images. And again, I'll probably just use about 60% of that, but I want to have more. If anything, uh, it's always better to have more uh, in case you change your mind later in post. So uh, in terms of settings, I was at F8 uh, ISO 400. I don't like to go above ISO 100 with the 5DSR. It's terrible in low light. Um, it's probably my only issue <laughs> with this camera, but uh, in this case, because there is some wind and I'm at 400 millimeters, I needed to bring up that shutter speed a little bit. So to me, it was a compromise of maybe having a little bit of noise, but having much sharper images. And I blocked my body with the camera because the wind is coming from this way as much as I could. So I think we're gonna have nice sharp images. I'm not terribly worried about it, but the light is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and the wind actually slowed down for a little bit there. This is the first time on this trip <laughs> that the wind actually slowed down when I was taking an image. So I'm sure that means that I, I jacked it up and it's not gonna stitch, but um, gosh, this is just absolutely incredible. This place is, uh, it's amazing. I mean, I, I, this is my first opportunity to be here um, and I'll definitely be coming back. It's, it's truly incredible. So uh, what a day, but let's go ahead and hop into post and get these processed. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Now I've gone ahead and merged this to Pano because that's something that we've covered on this channel in the past. And as you can see, we've got a lot here. <laughs> I went a little bit crazy. And because I generally shoot looking through the viewfinder, you can see on the top that I stopped every time I got to the sky, but on the bottom, because I didn't have that reference, I went a lot wider. So um, we've got a ton more information here than we really need. And the first thing obviously we need to do is crop. So I had originally intended for this to be a 16 by nine or six by 17, just focusing on this area here. But what you'll see is when we go to crop this, say we use a six by 17, we're coming out too wide and we're starting to get the sky. And I still want the top here. I like these lines coming down from the top of the butte. So then if we go to 16 by nine, I get to where I can almost get to the top of the butte, but I'm starting to get the sky. And what you'll also notice is the shape of the butte itself. This part right here, because it is a round object, is facing me and is the closest point. As we move around the butte, it starts to curve away. And when we crop in on those specific parts, you can see that it's curving away from you. And I find that extremely distracting. So when I got this in post, that was the first thing that I noticed that I had not noticed in the field was that by having part of the image curve away from you, it really distracted from this center part. So what I actually ended up doing was going with a four by five crop, which was definitely not what I had in mind when I was in the field, but I think it ultimately worked out well. Now my tripod was level, but as you can see, the butte is not a straight flat shape, but it does have these horizontal lines of sediment running through them. And I wanted those to be straight. So what I ended up doing 
was while cropping, I rotated my crop tool until I had straight lines on the top and the side, and then I just moved my crop until I got only the parts of the image that I cared about, which was right about here. Now, I will say that these shadows in the top left I found distracting, and I had originally thought that maybe I would crop them out, but when we bring it in, we start to lose this ridge on the side and this shadow here, which I really liked. So I ultimately decided that I think the image works better with this left in because I really liked this center uh, part of the image where it's smooth and just has these vertical lines of the rocks rolling down the hill. And I didn't want to crop that out. So I decided to leave this corner and just in post try and diminish that distraction. So this is the final crop that I ended up with. Okay, so I have opened up our final version here in Photoshop, and I wanna walk through where we ended up before I walk through the adjustments that I made. When I open this image and I look at it now, what I notice immediately is this foreground area here. My eye starts here, and after I've looked at all these ridges and followed the lines up, I get to the center part of the image here where we have these nice vertical lines bringing us to the top of the image. There's nothing that distracts me from that flow of starting at the bottom of the image and working my way through. And I think what we're left here with is an image with very nice contrast and overall good color balance. I like the 4x5 crop and I think it works very well for this scene. I especially like this central part of the image as I feel like it's a nice break and offers a little bit of simplicity to the scene compared to the chaos and texture in the foreground. Now, the way I got to this point was a series of adjustments, and I'm going to go in order. The first thing I do when I open my image is I open it as a smart object, and I start with a camera raw filter. Now, when you open your camera raw filter, you notice that it looks just like Lightroom. And I really like editing this way because it allows me to make multiple layers with minor adjustments and then return to those layers later to make fine adjustments as I progress on the image. So when we look at our raw image here, the way I always approach my post-processing is I ask myself, what do I like and what don't I like? Now, what I don't like is the color cast on the image. It's very blue and it's very magenta. What I do like are the highlights and shadows, especially in this foreground area. So I want to emphasize the foreground uh, contrast and then I want to minimize that color cast. So what I've done is I've warmed up the image just plus three, very minor change. And then I've pulled away from the magenta side, moving towards the green on the tint by minus 11. And again, that just fixes the overall color cast in the scene. I've brightened the exposure by just more than a quarter of a stop. I've added a bit of clarity and a little bit of vibrance just to restore the vibrance uh, compared to the raw file. Now this is the only change that I felt a need to make. Um, I will sometimes come into the color mixer and move my hue and luminance, but in this case I didn't feel a need to do that. So these were the only global adjustments that I made for this image. And so that brings us to this point here. Now we could stop here, I think that this looks uh, decent as it is. However, returning back to the theme of what do I like and what don't I like, I feel like this foreground is not standing out enough. I like the midground, but I think the foreground needs to stand out more. So that's where I move to more local adjustments. Now here's a series of layers that I made. I'm not gonna cover them all because it's the same process, um, just doing different things each time. So I'm gonna start with this first layer here. Now the first thing that I wanted to do was edit these peaks here these highest peaks that are catching light. You can see they've been darkened down and that causes the saturation to be quite high. And what you're left with are very muddy highlights that just don't really add anything to the scene. So what I did was I applied an or an effect layer. And as you can see by my mask, I'm just impacting these brightest highlights. Now, I've already brought this opacity down, but let me bring it all the way up just to really emphasize what it is I did here. And we can see here the area that I impacted. When I open my camera raw filter, and again, this is the wonderful part of smart objects is I can open and make changes to these layers as I see fit. What I did on this layer is I added in some warmth because I want my highlights to have that nice warmth of the setting sun. And I added a ton of exposure and increased my whites, really adding a ton of brightness to those highlights. 
I also added some vibrance because when you're increasing your luminance, you're decreasing that saturation. And I wanted to restore some color and make sure that I had color in my highlights and not just pure white. Finally, I applied a Gaussian blur to this. So you just go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then I brushed it in using a luminosity mask. I used the Jimmy McIntyre panel and I used a brights to mask. However, depending on what panels you use, obviously that will be a different process. I always brush in using full opacity so that I can tweak and make sure I'm only hitting the areas that I want. And then I will always decrease my opacity until I get to the exact luminance I'm looking for. And in this case, I think about 20% was right. Next, what I wanted to do just to further increase the contrast of these ridges is I want to bring out my shadows. So I made a duplicate layer of my base. And once again, working with a smart object, I created a camera raw filter. And in this case, when we look at the camera raw filter, we'll see I did the opposite. I increased my blacks by a bit and I brought myself over towards the blue side by minus 12. Now, what you'll also notice is I decreased my saturation because when you're decreasing the luminance, it's going to increase saturation. So if I bring the saturation back to zero, you can see the shadows get a little bit too blue and purple. So I brought it to minus 12 just to kind of reduce that overall saturation. Now, when we look at this layer, I did not decrease my opacity at all. I left it at 100% because it's a very minor change anyways. And then using a luminosity mask of a darks three, I applied it just to my shadows. And this gives us that separation that we were looking for. The final change that I wanted to make was a general brightness over the entire top and foreground. And you'll notice on each of my masks here, I have left out this section here. I didn't want to make any changes here. I'm only trying to make this area and this area stand out from the middle. So I duplicated my or in effect layer and I had a much ge more general mask here. As you can see, I'm applying to a much larger percentage of the image. And that was just to apply a general warmth and brightness. However, when I open my camera raw filter, you'll see that I really increased my oranges and my magentas, as well as saturation and vibrance. And that was the whole point of this, is that I'm adding so much uh, light to the foreground, I wanna restore some of that color that I'm bleeding out. So the reason I have these two brightness layers is one, I'm impacting different areas. The previous one was just the peaks of these ridges. Now I'm impacting all the highlights in my foreground. So it's a more general layer in that sense, but also because I'm affecting the color a lot more with this layer. So I'm not just adding the luminance contrast, it's also some color contrast. And we can see the effect here. It really pulls your eye more into the foreground. And when we look at the impact of these three layers as a whole, you can see that the foreground now jumps out at you a lot more than it did in the base exposure. Okay, and now what we're left with is an image that I feel good about the contrast, and I think the composition works, and overall I think we could stop here and have a nice image. However, I'll always do one last color adjustment at the very end, because we've made several contrast and luminance adjustments, and those impact your colors. So as I mentioned in the beginning, I moved away from the blues and the magentas because they were too strong, but now that I made all these changes to my luminance and contrast, I feel that the magentas and blues are lacking. I've overcorrected. So I wanna restore a little bit of that into the image. So what I've done is I've created a series of curves layers. And the first one is just a general S curve. And you can see here, it's very minimal. I'm barely impacting my shadows at all. It's really just in the highlights. And then I've reduced the opacity to 66%. But what it's doing is it's just giving some punch back to those highlights. Then what I've done is another curve, but this time only focusing on my red channel. And you can see by raising that red channel in the middle here, even at an opacity of 38%, I've just restored some of those red tones that magenta back into the image. And I think it gives it a much better color balance. 
for the blues, I made an even more minor adjustment. And this may be almost impossible to pick up <laughs> on the screen, but uh, just a very minor curves adjustment to restore some of those blues. And then of course, as always, I group all of my adjustments into groupings so that when I come back in the future, I may come back in three weeks and think, whoa, way too much red in this image. I know exactly where to go to target that. And all of my adjustments are very easy to see and edit. So I will group them and then I can go back to the original and see where I started, where we were at after luminance and contrast and where we were at with after color. I may end up tweaking the top of the image a bit. Um, I'm not 100% pleased with this. I was really focusing with these edits on the center part of the image here, but I think overall, this is a strong image and one I think you'll see on this channel in a future print and framing video. All right, well, that's gonna do it for me this week. Thanks as always for watching and let me know in the comments what you think about the video and how I process the image. Otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Now get out there and make some images.